Hello, so I do a lot of combining of circus and cosplay, and I thought I'd take you on to sort of the behind the scenes of how I film these very small short videos because it is a whole weird complicated process and it's a wildly embarrassing process because I do this in public. I do this, I also had to, after this one, go to um, Joanne's, <laughs> so I had to go in cosplay to the craft store, which I have done more than once, um, but yeah, this is just sort of a behind the scenes of how I film these very strange videos. I used a small costume as Anakin for this one just because he's a very simple costume to put on and a very simple costume to transport, but some of the ones that get a little, it gets a little harder to put said costume on yourself with bag zippers and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm just gonna take you through that whole process. So I have this really convenient mood bag that I got from New York because I spent way too much money in mood. Um, and so right now I've just got the whole costume in this whole thing. I've got a ring light. I only use, I use natural lighting, which is why we're doing it at like 12.30 in the afternoon. Um, I don't use the actual lights on these and I just let the ring light exist. I have wigs, I've got everything else. I take it apart and I take this with my wheel and then with my backpack in um, because my backpack has screws and all the other circus equipment that I need. Um, yeah. <laughs> Setting up a ring light is really important, especially when you're in a space that is not very neutral. This is the most neutral space I have access to. I'd love to use a more neutral space or a place that is a little more characteristic to characters, but this is what I have at the moment for where I'm at in the spaces that I have access to. That was a very convoluted explanation for why I film in a very strange green room at the YMCA, but I set my ring light in the corner because this is the most neutral of spaces. And then I think for me, the most important thing is setting up the wheel, obviously, and a lot of people find this a mystifying process. How do you transport the wheel? Well, it comes apart in five pieces and here you're watching me just set it up. So the first thing you do is this is my easy to put together wheel. So you just shove it together and it actually goes in really, really simply. Um, and people, I mean, the thing is that it seems unsturdy, but it is actually decently fine. Um, this is my second wheel, this is my Circus Concepts wheel. It is the newer wheel, it turns two years old in February or late January, which is really exciting. <laughs> to generally screw it all together so i have two screws on one side there are two screws on the other side there are two screws that come out every time and then two screws that stay in the screws that stay in are fully screwed with loctite right now they are not going anywhere and then the screws that i take out and in i have to screw pretty tight this um this wheel the screws like to come loose pretty fast but you just have to re-screw them in um you also notice that i'm fully in bottom half anakin i've got the boots on i've got the pants on and i have to walk into the ymca like that but that is not the embarrassing part the embarrassing part is walking out of the ymca in full costume because most of the time i'm too lazy to take anything off and especially with things like loki where there's back zippers i don't want to take it off because the effort of taking off a bag zipper on your own is extremely insane and something i never do <laughs> warm up because as a as a circus artist as a professional circus artist warming up is extremely important uh, if i don't warm up <laughs> then that's where i set myself up for injury so i have to do that awkward thing oh yeah the door is open for this so anyone can look in at any time and you know i mean it's awkward it's fine people have caught me in cosplay all the time but also i'm kind of like a weird legend at the ymca of that weird guy who wears costumes sometimes um and spins in a giant wheel so i guess it's fine people are used to my weird shenanigans at this point it was more awkward in 2020 when i first started doing all of this but yeah you warm up you do some skills i just did some basic skills some like one arm one leg stuff with cosplay you're limited in what you can do so i usually just do the stuff that i know i can do in things that inhibit movement with anakin i can do coin spins and i can go on my hands so it's really exciting but with some costumes near impossible especially with things that have slightly longer trains and this is why you'll never see any of my extremely extravagant costumes on wheel when i am warm and when everything's set up we put on the whole rest of the costume and then this is a process because you have to put on the under tunic the over tunic if you're curious this is 
I think, almost a screen accurate Rebel Legion, like, Anakin costume. I used the guidelines, then I gave up halfway through the belt because there was just so much going on it. And then I had everything for the belt, and half of it fell back off. So my 3D printed food capsules are RIP in the Indiana Convention Center from Gen Con 2021. Um, but yeah, so we have the, sh the tunic, the under tunic, the over tunic, and then we have the tabards, which are two layers of tabards, gauze tabards, and then new pleather tabards, I mean new tabards for GalaxyCon recently. And so these new tabards have the little dart where the Y shape happens, so they're a little more screen accurate. They're also in this really nice dark pleather. I didn't use real leather because I don't really trust myself with real leather and I love it, but oh my goodness, the machine sewing of it would be a nightmare. So I used pleather and I just used a walking foot and it was really, really nice. Um, the belt is the same way. It's used, it's done in pleather. It's done with, there's a leather pouch on it though. And then we have a screen accurate buckle and yeah, it just snaps in the back. It also has little Velcro pieces for the pouches. Those I did 3D print and they're held on with Velcro. It's really, really nice. One thing about Jedi's is that you will adjust everything millions of times. There is, it's not staying in place. People always give you suggestions, but snaps or buckles or Velcro or belts, it'll still shift because of the way that everything is set up. And that's completely fine. I've accepted that. It's just kind of weird looking after a while if you're spinning. There are some pictures of me at a convention where I spun in Anakin on stage. And by the end of the piece, the tabards were hiked up approximately five inches where they should be. Oh yeah, my glove. So the glove is entirely screen accurate. I quilted it, I made the glove. Don't make gloves, kids. Um, the buckles I salvaged from my old glove, um, and with wigs as well, since we're on wigs right now, um, is use the elastic and make it really tight. If I can go upside down with this wig and be pretty okay, as long as the elastic is tight on my face, but also bobby pins can help a lot. I'm just, um, I lose bobby pins. I was a dancer for years, I know. <laughs> Um, and then with the makeup, I just do really simple makeup because it's going to get sweat off anyway, so I don't want it in my eye. Um, I didn't bring makeup wipes, <laughs> so I had to walk out of the YMCA with a fake scar that only looks slightly real. Um, but yeah, so then I start spinning. So we'll have a little montage at the end, but for the spinning start, I usually start with some pretty basic manipulations to get used to the costume, to get into it, figure it out, how it moves, and then eventually it goes into bigger stuff. With Anakin, you can also pretend that you're using the force on the wheel because the wheel has a force of its own with physics. And so that's always really fun. Um, and yeah, you'll notice that my arms don't really raise above my, my head um, and that's kind of for purpose, but also you'll notice why. Um, basically, the adjustment period after I film looks like this. I stand by that mirror and I adjust myself very very long it is a long process and then yeah it just gets more complicated and convoluted as time goes on And of course, you need your little shimmy breaks in there, some little dance breaks to make it fun, because being in character, because the character part is really fun, but being in character is also a hard thing, especially when you're, you know, a lot of edgy characters like Loki or Anakin, it can get a little complicated, but yeah, it's your will. I'll gladly do more characters. Anakin is just the first one I've done this year because I haven't filmed in a while and I thought it was finally time. So I'll probably film more characters when I do this again. <laughs> 